Thank you, uh, Sir David. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship this morning to be just on time uh, for the debate and to be able to bring this important debate to the House uh, about the economy of the East Midlands, which follows on from the adjournment debate uh, I held in July about devolution for our area. It's been a busy summer and lots of progress has been made with these proposals, with wider developments of major projects that I hope to put across to the Minister this morning. What's clear is that the East Midlands has huge potential, untapped potential, and must be at the heart of government's levelling up plans uh, in the spending review in the levelling up white paper this autumn. I hope to take the Minister through some of those developments this morning, which you might imagine as a Notts MP and a Notts County Council leader, I'll have more say on Nottinghamshire, but I trust uh, and hope that my colleagues will chip in with proposals and opportunities from across their constituencies also. Uh, for context, Sir David, the East Midlands is home to over 5 million people, over 175,000 businesses. We have a diverse mix of counties, cities, market towns, countryside, uh, and a distinct uh, culture, distinct communities. It contains world-class business, innovation, manufacturing, excellence, and whilst the region's economy of 99 billion uh, has untapped, uh, uh, untapped potential for growth. Despite that critical mass and potential, the East Midlands has received some of the lowest levels of government investment over many years, lowest levels of private investment over many years compared with other parts of the country. Back in July, I met with the Prime Minister and laid out four huge opportunities for the East Midlands, which can create jobs, unlock housing uh, and growth, and get the region up to a level of support and investment that's in line with other parts of the country. These major interventions are all coming together this autumn, with a number of key decisions where government needs to come down on the side of investment and development in our region. First, our East Midlands Development Corporation. The DEVCO represents a major opportunity to regenerate, to create jobs and homes on key sites. It gives us the opportunity to master plan our area, to ensure that we're bringing forward the very best employment opportunities, that we're leading the way on green growth, environmental policy, that we're offering investors a really attractive opportunity to simplify the planning process, to get things done at pace. It currently sits over three sites, but in the future, with the right democratic oversight, it could be used to bring forward further sites across our region. And this development vehicle could be a major weapon in our armory with the right government backing, if we can utilise it effectively uh, into the future, rather than continuing to adopt a piecemeal approach with all sorts of different vehicles and delivery mechanisms popping up all over the place. Here we can take a long-term strategic approach to our region's growth. So key decision number one is back the Development Corporation in planning legislation this autumn and give it the powers and the guarantees that it needs. Second, the East Midlands Freeport. Colleagues lobbied hard last year to secure the East Midlands as one of the key sites for a free port to take advantage of our post-Brexit trading opportunities and to boost business and jobs in our region. We have a unique proposition, the only inland free port uh, in the UK, built around an airport rather than on the coast, with the potential to act as a hub and the heart for the wider free port network, as well as the logistical centre of the UK with its key geographical location, proximity to major road rail and air collections. The outline business case will be submitted this week, and once again, I and MPs across the region are calling on government to back us, help us deliver this free port, uh, along with the council and business partners, to support our vision to level up the East Midlands, to create jobs and opportunities for people in our region, and maximise the potential of this package of project, uh, projects that I'm going through today. The whole uh, is bigger than the sum of the parts, if these actions can be taken in, in unison. Third, HS2 is a major opportunity for the East Midlands. I recognise it's not university popular, uh, so I'm not going to stand here and go on about the benefits of the Eastern Leg in fall or, or the wider project, but this is a debate on the East Midlands, so I'll focus on the local part. The key to this for us is that Toten is a major centre for our future growth. It's a site where we've invested almost a decade of work and planning, tens of millions in infrastructure and preparation, including direct tram connections to Nottingham City, where there's huge interest in investing in skills, in research and innovation, as well as commercial and residential development. Success for Toten could also unlock plans to the north around Chesterfield and Bolsover uh, for a major engineering centre built around HS2 with potential for 2,500 jobs uh, in an area of North, North, Nottinghamshire and North Derbyshire. That should be absolutely at the heart of the levelling up agenda. Former coalfield, post-industrial towns uh, are the epitome of the kind of red wall areas that need support and where we made big promises about supporting them at the last election. Whatever your view on HS2 as a whole, given the PM's committed to delivering it in some shape or form, What's key for our region is Toten and the surrounding plans and projects form a big part of that IRP decision. Whatever government decides, whatever form it ultimately takes, uh, that the DFT, other departments work with us, the region, Midlands Connect and other local stakeholders to include Toten plans and to make the most of that investment. I know decisions on the IRP to be taken soon. Uh, as the chair of the HS2 Strategy Board, I'd welcome a conversation with the Secretary of State for transport ahead of that decision about what's possible, about ensuring that key local priorities are part of that decision. I know the headlines will be about how much track's going down if it goes from place A to place B. So the risk that our local requirements are lost, um, you know, that can't be allowed to happen. For us, 
Um, whether it's a win for the area, ultimately whether we can support the decision as local stakeholders depends on the detail. Does it deliver growth? Where? What impact on our regional connectivity? Will it help to deliver projects like the Robin Hood line, access to Toton, the Midlands Rail Hub? These are key questions that need to be answered in the IRP. Uh, I trust the Minister will pass on my request for that conversation uh, with the DFT. So we're saying that these sites, Toton, related to the Freeport, could all benefit from partnership with the DEVCO, combining the existing opportunities and incentives with a master planning element, uh, simplified processes from the Development Corporation that means we can deliver bigger, better and faster. It's important that it has the right oversight, and I'll get onto that, but bringing key sites together under this mechanism for delivery could supercharge the whole package. As I said, the whole can be greater than the sum uh, of the parts. This is a package of interventions uh, with key decisions to be taken in the coming months. So number four, then, is devolution. Uh, I held an adjournment debate on this in the summer before we adjourned laid out the potential benefit of devolved power for our region and the impact we could make on our communities if we can make bespoke local interventions, if we could improve our skills offer, if we could intervene where there are health inequalities, if we could improve and join up our transport network, boost economic development, collaborate more effectively across different authorities, plan for housing in a more strategic and joined up way. There's a lot we could do with the right powers and budget devolved to a local level. Governments ask for proposals and in Nottinghamshire at least, though I can't speak as clearly for other areas, we're extremely interested in that. Uh, conversation. We've spoken with ministers, we've spoken with officials, we have a clear idea of what we want to achieve and we want to be out there leading the way. Following all those conversations with stakeholders, local and national, in knots, we agree that government, uh, with government the best way to deliver devolution in areas like ours is through the mechanism of county deals. We want to bring forward deals for Nottinghamshire and Nottingham using our existing legal framework for collaboration, our Economic Prosperity Committee, to manage our joined up approach to delivery, work with our districts and boroughs, and we're offering a package of local public service reform in return, bringing both tiers together under the EPC to deliver more efficient and effective local services. We agreed across all of those Nottinghamshire local authorities. Uh, we've done much of the work and planning uh, in the background already, and my Chief Executive and I will come and camp on the lawn outside MHCLG uh, until we get the thing done, frankly, uh, Sir David. The Minister just needs to say the word and set us up a pitch uh, in an appropriate place. I hope that colleagues across the region, uh, though I'm not party to all of the local discussions, are able to put forward similar deals for Derbyshire, Leicestershire, Lincolnshire uh, in due course, giving us all access to the huge potential of these devolved powers and offering us the opportunity to work together across the region on delivery. It could also give us the ability to work together on the oversight of these projects, Development Corporation, Freeport, HS2 and others, and allow us to steer that ship future sites and projects. I recognise in the Prime Minister's speech that he clearly sees devolution as a mechanism to deliver on the levelling up agenda. We want to be at the heart of that. I certainly want Nottinghamshire to lead the way and to be among the early adopters of this project. So as you can see today, with the four projects as a package are linked and are interdependent. Uh, and if delivered together, they could be uh, much more than the sum of their parts. On that from as a region, these Midlands does come together already. So we have strong foundations upon which to build. Under the leadership of Sir John Peace, Chairman of the Midlands Engine, Public and private sector partners from across the region have been working on HS2, Development Corporation, Freeport Ambitions. This has led to a strong sense of trust and confidence among senior stakeholders. And we know we've got the goodwill and the momentum to do more. Currently, we're working with Sir John on plans to capitalise on this goodwill by strengthening our regional partnerships. We call this partnership the Alchemy Board. I'm confident that Alchemy could provide us with an effective East Midlands partnership umbrella so that local devolution efforts have a place to share and develop significant opportunities on a regional level. There's work to do there to make changes, to bring that together, but we have those building blocks uh, in place, and I think it's an attractive proposition. So I hope it's clear that we have, on a regional level, some key projects, a vision for the future that can create wealth across the East Midlands. Uh, these four things are already away, uh, underway, are coming together this autumn for decisions, and um, with government support can create tens of thousands of jobs, thousands of homes, change the life chances of people in the East Midlands. If government delivers the powers for the DEVCO in its planning legislation, if it backs our Freeport bid and supports us through the full business case to reach delivery stage, if it ensures that whatever the bigger picture on HS2, that Toten forms a big part of it, uh, of the IRP plans, that our local connectivity and economic growth form a big part of those IRP plans, uh, and if it will agree to get us on track for early devolution packages in line with its own policy goals to be announced in the white paper this autumn, then we're well placed to level up the East Midlands and to deliver on government's own promises. All of this is already underway. All of it fits with government's own plans and priorities, so we should get on with it. Uh, and I hope that the Minister will be able to give us some positive uh, soundings on that today. You can add to this list a ton of other projects. Growth corridors, Midlands Engine Rail, Midlands Rail Hub, Step Fusion Energy, Space Park at Leicester, Infinity Park in Derby. My colleagues will no doubt add many more to the list. But it's an exciting time in the East Midlands, and this autumn is an exciting time with key things coming together that can really boost. Uh, I was going to sum up, uh, Sir David, uh, with the key point here, of course, that with a little bit of 
government support on some key decisions this autumn, backing this area that's consistently been bottom of the tables when it comes to public and private sector investment, which therefore should make it top of the agenda from a levelling up perspective. We've got a package here that already exists that could boost our economy uh, and improve the life chances of those very uh, local people that my, uh, the Honourable Member opposite mentioned. I call on the Minister and the Government therefore to back these plans to make these four key decisions in favour of these Midlands disorders. Mm -hmm.